Okay, welcome to another uh, Facebook Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. I have a big honor and pleasure to introduce <laughs> my friend and uh, a longtime vegan, um, Ryan Lum from Happy Healthy Vegan. So, Ryan, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks. I'm glad you thought of me, Jeff. Yeah. This is cool. I've been wanting to come on your live stream since you started up. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, no, I know. I started, uh, just started doing uh, guests. So I'm glad that you're actually, besides uh, our, a couple of our athletes, you you are my very first uh, guest. <laughs> cool. Hey, I'm an athlete too, but that's not yeah, my... Yeah, too. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a side thing. It's not like my full-time pursuit or anything, but it's, it's a lifelong passion, exercise, sport. And now that I'm over 50, I see it's really important to stay fit you know even though i'm more of a musician and media person but as you get older you really have to incorporate that into your life <laughs> I, I agree to me nutrition and fitness are two halves of a whole really you put them together and that's where you get uh, the best effects and the best overall health it's funny so, so I'm, I'm a musician a music producer i guess more so than anything it's funny to see some of these like musicians from the like 60s and 70s like mick fleetwood or fleetwood mac you know a notorious crazy partier drunk and all this stuff he says now he trains with his trainer every day an hour you know or two it's just to be fit because it's the band is not a bunch of alcoholics anymore they're all trying to stay fit so they keep doing what they're doing into their older years <laughs> Well, and it makes sense for those people, especially, I mean, I always thought, of, look, I'm 57, so I, I want to enjoy the rest, back half of my life. And, and Hell yeah. Huh? That's what <laughs> so, it's all about. It's not just living a long time, but having a high quality of life, you know, right. what, what, like, yeah, to like just go off on a tiny tangent, you know, my dad, um, he's, the last 10 years of his life were horrible. You know, he had a bunch of health problems. I guess that was a huge wake up call for me to get my thing together before I was, you know, committed to that kind of, um, uh, last you know half of my life so let, let's start at the top obviously yeah. you're vegan <laughs> um, yeah this will be my 10th year i know you, you've got me beat by a little bit but yeah this fall will be my 10th year <laughs> so 10 years so still it was it was still not a real big thing not the thing it is today not even it's a whole you know it's totally different now it's like <laughs> landing on another planet compared to 10 years ago <laughs> <laughs> and indeed so what what was it what's your story what was the trigger that said okay this is i'm done with this i'll try to make this as quick as possible because it's <laughs> it's a little convoluted but i was before that in, in the 19 i went yeah vegan 2010 but in the 1990s i was already attracted to vegetarianism and i tried it for i don't know i don't i didn't write a diary down or anything like that maybe two to five months, something like that when I was in college. But I was still living at home. I wasn't cooking all my food. My mom tried to accommodate me all I could, but I was attracted to the idea that animals don't need to die in order for me to live. It just made a lot of sense to me at the time. But I guess incorporating that into my life in 1992, there was no internet as we know it. You know, it was very little information. So anyway, I just had abandoned it. I met Angie, my wife and um, YouTube partner, um, in 1998. She was a, a lifelong vegetarian, basically. She started in the 80s in, in high school. And she knew I was already, um, had tried vegetarianism. So she knew I was, you know, compatible and, you know, open-minded. And um, so I was eating low meat anyway, but from 1998 to 2010. So just going vegan is finally this last push. Like, what am I waiting for? It's like, even in 2010, I, I realized it's pretty easy now, you know, compared yeah. to what it was like in 1992. There's absolutely no reason not to go vegan. And still that whole um, force of the... Um, the, the, the realization that animals don't need to die for me to live. Because I like to put it like this. If you had a choice, if you had to choose a lifestyle that necess necessitated animals dying in order for you to live, you could pick one that didn't. Why wouldn't you pick the one that's more moral, ethical? It doesn't like Most people don't think it's cool to kill animals. They have pets. They know animals are sentient beings that want to be loved. They want to stay alive. Um, yeah. So it seemed like a no-brainer. And it still seems like a no-brainer proposition <laughs> to me now. Of course. For sure. And I think when the, the people get the light bulb moment, it's like, wow, wh why why did I wait so long for this? I mean, this yeah. is so obvious and so good. And it's so good on so many different levels. I mean, yeah. it's like, you know a truth when it applies 
like three-dimensional chess. It applies at every <laughs> single level. It's a win. Oh, it's a win for the environment. It's a win for the animals. It's a win for your health. It's, uh, I mean, come on. It's, it's a triple <laughs> win, I like to call it. And the longer I stay, I find even more quadruple, quintuple win. But it's easy. Health, animals, environment. No brainer. I mean. <laughs> but you look at look at our healthcare system, our tax base. I mean, you know, we're trillions, 20, over $20 trillion in debt. And you know, a big chunk of that is healthcare. And all this healthcare money is being dumped into people who are eating the standard American diet, are getting sick, and then going on all these drugs and hospitalizations. And we can't afford to keep doing this. It's just going to break our economy. It already is starting change. to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And it's kind of unfair, too. Like, you know, um, like um, health care. Um, uh, rates are determined by age. So the older you get, the higher the cost go. Because typically your cohorts are pretty ill people the older right. you get. And it sucks. Like me, I'm on zero medications, <laughs> which is rare. I learned for a guy in his 50s. I, yeah. I'm going to be 53 in a couple weeks. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I get my blood tested every well, 12 to 18 months. Um, and I put it on YouTube for everyone to see complete transparency. And nice. yeah, everything's fine. I'm not deficient in anything. And most people my age, my doctor told me, even younger, are already diabetic or pre-diabetic. I put my hemoglobin A1C, my fasting glucose. I'm totally fine. People saying all those smoothies, bananas, you're going to get diabetes. <laughs> well, I'm waiting. They've been telling me that since 2013. <laughs> right. Like, when the hell is this going to happen? It just shows you it's just bull crap. <laughs> it is. And I love so many of your videos on the YouTube channel, the, the Happy Healthy Vegan, where you just go out and debunk, 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 debunk. And it's like, God, how many times do we have to keep doing this before people get it? You know, I think we, we have a, a pandemic going on, but I think the real pandemic is of ignorance and of misinformation. And yeah, there's there's that too. That existed, yeah, before the pandemic. Yeah, it makes my, <laughs> my job really easy because there's so much misinformation out there about vegan diets, which is great. I learned, it really taught me to or fine tune my my mental skills to um, separate bullcrap misinformation from actual, you know, scientifically derived conclusions. And yeah, that's basically what I do on our channel. I mean, we do a whole lot, but what my favorite thing is what I call the critical thinking breakdowns. I just did one yesterday and taught people how to do a little bit of logic and philosophy because, yeah, there is a certain uh, person who goes has vegan in their social media name, but he's been putting all this stuff out how um, veganism isn't backed by science and all this crap. So I said, all right, I called him out. I said, show me, show me these studies that, that convinced you and you want to announce to the whole world that <laughs> veganism isn't backed by science. So I went through them and I, and I went through them as objectively as I can. People say you're biased because you're vegan. No, I went through what the studies authors said and looked at their data, their methods, their conclusions. And nowhere in any of that, between the two studies they gave me, could you conclude anything about vegans, let alone vegetarians? It just shows you people have a complete lack of critical thinking skills. So I'm showing people how to read through the studies and we're not scientists here we're just lay people but how to read through the studies and use your critical thinking skills to see what's really what you can really conclude from that because people like to take a study and say ha huh, this proves x y and z and let's see if it does let's see if it logically follows and and you know look 1985 back when i was <laughs> turned vegan there was this much science <laughs> yeah. available about veganism. <laughs> there was a big goose egg. So, um, and all the science was based on omnivores. None of it included or even looked at uh, the metabolic factors, the indicators. Because when you change to a, uh, a plant-based diet, your whole physiology changes, your microbiome changes, everything changes. And, and if you're not looking at research that includes vegans, which fortunately there are some out there now because of yeah. the popularity, mm -hmm. we're finally getting some data in a subset comparing vegans and, and, and uh, non-vegans uh, and, and seeing the differences, seeing the biological shift, seeing the endocrinological shift, the, the microbiome shift, all of it's changing. So all these assumptions that oh, you can't get enough vitamin K2 because uh, vitamin K2 is only converted in animals. Well, guess what we are? An animal. <laughs> guess I mean, what? come on. Are you not connecting the dots there? And then, of course, when the study comes out, oh, but we looked at people who are 
a change to a plant-based diet because the fiber goes into their gut. They're feeding more of the microorganisms that actually convert the vitamin K1 to K2. And therefore, vegans actually have higher levels of K2. But we never knew that because we were only looking at the omnivores and the data. And their data was saying because they had crappy uh, gut health and no microbiome to feed that because they're not eating fiber, of course, they're not converting K1 to K2 because they haven't changed their diet yet. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's a faulty assumption to assume what happens biologically, microbiologically with omnivores. People eating very different from vegans assume the totally. same thing happens to us. Too. I mean, some processes I'm sure are the same, but to assume right. every last thing, yeah, the science needs to flush that out and see what's true and which just has been assumption. It, it, it's 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 funny, but I'm glad there's finally real significant, you know, gold standard RCT published human mm -hmm. data out there that is actually really including uh, vegans out there. It's it's been a long haul. <laughs> it's a long time coming. Yeah, there's a lot of data out there now. It's pretty irrefutable. I like to point to the um, position paper of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And a lot of people think it's just a, an abstract where they make a few proclamations. No, it's actually a very long, lengthy paper. And at the end, there's over 100 uh, references, most of which are peer-reviewed, scientific, published articles that show why they came out and said that appropriately planned vegan and even vegetarian diets are nutritionally adequate and helpful for people in all stages of life. And anyone who's trying to say that science doesn't support veganism, oh, oh, I, have you gone through these hundred plus references and debunked <laughs> them? No, you just gave me two crappy studies that didn't even have any vegans studied in them, you know? And, <laughs> And paid for by the uh, meat and dairy industry or the which Ag Council. Me, which makes me wonder, these people that are, I'm just speculating, I have no evidence, but I've been wondering, a lot of these people, you know who I'm talking about, that recently made videos, I'm no longer vegan, you know, right. these kinds of, I wonder if there is some kind of um, money, because I know the, the um, yeah, the meat and, yeah, egg board, dairy board, uh, um, cattlemen's beef association, all these people, there's, there's lobbyist groups that they fund. And I have done articles before where it's been documented that they pay influencers, typically non -ve not vegan ones, but just regular yeah. meat eating ones, um, dairy drinking ones to show, oh, let's show, let's, we're going to do this program right now in the fall and, sh and convince parents to pack cheese in their lunches for their children. Let's get some influencers on YouTube and Instagram to do this. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if there's a more covert arm of that marketing into oh. trying to find people who are on kind of the edge of veganism, maybe ones that got into it because it's a trendy fad diet or whatever, and right. try to convince them like, hey, your YouTube views are down. You want to make some more money? I wonder. Yes. And I tell people, if they ever come to me, I'm going to go along with it as far as I can, then expose the F out of it and let people <laughs> yeah. know what's really going on. But because I'm so <laughs> outspoken about that, they'll probably never approach me. But I'm sure they haven't watched every last video I've made to know that's my stance. But I want them to come to me and I want to expose them. Yeah, totally. I mean, and and look, it's they're, they're businesses. They're, I just saw the the study that showed uh, meat sales are down eighteen percent year to date. So they're hurting, and they're hurting bad. And um, and you know, and and then I see uh, uh, the meat analog sales are up three hundred percent, five hundred percent, six hundred percent, and they're down eighteen percent. They're scared. And of course, they're going to use every marketing tool on the bucket, whether it's influencers or or whatever, or, or advertising. I'm everything, that. everything yeah. at their disposal because yeah. they have a and lot of money. Mm -hmm. They're a business and they're trying to survive. I get that. But mm -hmm. we got to, as individuals, really discern what is marketing and what is actual truth. You know, for me. All the science was validation because uh, my dad was an English professor. My mom was a psychologist. So my friends were children of academics, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so very bright group of circle, which is nice. Yeah, it's cool. I, went yeah. Vegan, I got bombarded <laughs> with all the intellectual questions and I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I don't have answers. For we we, we got to wait a few more years, guys, for all the science to come out. <laughs> yeah. I don't have it right now. I'll, I'll get it. I'm working on it. Uh, but I knew in my heart it was right. I knew in my soul it was right. There's just no reason for it. And, you know, you look at you look at other cultures that have been never had uh, animal products in them at all and thriving and stuff like that. There's lots of tons of previous evidence, even before the research is coming out. But I'm like, on an intuitive level, can't you just see, look, all of these nutrients, all of the essential amino acids made by plants, all of the vitamins and minerals made by plants, all the fiber, all the carbohydrates, all the essential fatty acids made by plants. 
then feed them to an animal, kill the animal, and steal its plant nutrients. That or, 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 give the animal supplements, or give the animal supplements, then kill the animal, and then eat the animal <laughs> so you can get that supplement of B12. What are you doing? It's, it's, it's insanity. A, it's an excuse to, to involve the death and subjugation and murder of an animal for absolutely no reason at all. It's wasteful. It costs more. It's more destructive to the environment, and it's destructive to our health. What part of that is good? What part of that is worth paying for? All people can say it goes back to my taste pleasure. So I say your taste pleasure gives you the, the right to commit an immoral action, like killing, right. killing a sentient being. Say your taste pleasure involved um, not just cows. Say you really somehow want to have the taste pleasure of eating a human or something. Is that immorally justified because that satisfies your taste pleasure? Do you have the moral right to destroy our planet? Because, yeah, animal agriculture is the number one source of greenhouse gas emissions, more than all of transportation combined. And animal agriculture, or at least eating animals, has been involved in the origins of pretty much every pandemic we've ever experienced here. So you, that, your taste pleasure gives you the right to put us on these horrible economic lockdowns, killing hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, where does it end? Where does your right to have taste pleasure like stop? Because you're, you're destroying everything in the wake of that uh, pr uh, that goal of pursuing your taste pleasure. And it's a, it's a bogus argument. I'm just showing how absurd it is. Well, and I, I think we're on the cusp of a lot of that mindset beginning to crack and, and change. And I'm glad to see it. And it's causing a disruption, which I'm really glad to see. But it's systemic, whether it's sexism, racism, mm -hmm. ageism, ableism, speciesism. Mm -hmm. It's all this mindset that I have the right to somehow subjugate, control, torture, kill, or, or take away the rights of any other individual based on their appearance, their position, their quality, their belief system. It's wrong. It's wrong across the board. I mean, I, I, I read a great article um, the other day um, that talked about intersectionalism, which yeah. is, it's, it's a common thread. Are you compassionate to your friends? Why don't you just keep extending that circle? I just don't get it. How would you treat your friend or family, your daughter, your son, your wife, your husband? How would you treat them? Why are you not extending that same level of compassion outwards? I just don't get that. Yeah, I've been kind of um, um, disappointed the past few months seeing that there's a certain subset of not only people, but vegans who seem to have trouble extending the, the compassion that they're so proudly, you know, um, being activists for, for animals, having a difficult time extending that compassion to groups of humans who have been systemically um, kept down um, through the, the, the our, our, our history. And, and it's, it's prevalent. I mean, it's what most of the wars are based on, us versus them. It's mm -hmm. that that somehow that an imaginary border that is made up in somebody's mind that is that is a line that does not exist in the physical world, only in humans' minds. This imaginary line, somehow someone standing on that other side of that imaginary line is somehow less than the person standing on the other side of that imaginary line. I mean, yeah, when just you make so someone bizarre, you're right. And that's how like animal agriculture has been able to get away with it for so long with the ag gag laws. It's illegal to see what actually happens inside yeah. of a slaughterhouse. I wonder why. I mean, I don't think there's like laws preventing people from seeing what happens inside the Tesla factory, their Ikea factory <laughs> or whatever. But and go into a factory of animal slaughter. You can't see that. So, yeah, animals are just the other. It's just this abstract thing. You, people don't realize what it takes to get the when they go to the market to get that piece of dead meat there or at the restaurant. It's a horrible process the whole way through, environmentally and morally. And, and, and look, it's such a beautiful thing to, on the flip side, I mean, there's, there's a lot of anger going on right now because of the injustices, and this is rightfully so. It needs to stop. It needs to be changed, and we need a culture shift. But on the other side, there's a lot of love there. I mean, that that's what's so beautiful about the vegan movement is its foundation, truly vegan, not mm -hmm. people who are just claiming the word for, for, for Absolutely. a diet. Let's make yeah. that distinction. I agree 100%. <laughs> people who are there because they know it's morally wrong to 
to kill, torture, harm sentient beings for food, clothing, or any other purpose. And everything else goes along after that. But that's what, yeah, what separates someone who's a vegan from plant-based. I'm not being the police here. This is just how these words are defined. You know, vegan Correct. is a moral ethical principle. And it happens to be super healthy and great for the environment. <laughs> it's just like you said, a win-win. So I came for the moral ethical reasons the longer I stayed like, oh my God, I had no idea. I knew I had an inkling of it was probably healthy. I didn't know how healthy it was. So, you know, if you're, you're vegan, your, your chances of dying from the leading causes of death go way down. Way you know? down. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. And I, I know a lot of the people that we that we talk to and, and stuff like this kind of already know this and, and are on the same. But, you know, how have you I know, especially in today's modern polarized society, um, <laughs> one of the biggest challenges I have was obviously there's haters and trolls and we have right. even terminology for them out there <laughs> but how, how do you reach across the aisle so to speak to connect with somebody and in a subtle way that allows some of that communication to happen um allows some of that transference of hey you know where i'm coming from it's it's really about the compassion it's really about trying to do some good both for yourself, but for, for others. I mean, you know, how can we get past the din of, mm -hmm. you know, us against them and this, this polarized dogmatic banter where they're just throwing at each other's faces. Yeah, this is why I deal with pretty much on a daily basis. I'll share you my experience with that. We want to make the distinction, the absolute clear distinction between people who are not vegan. So those who might disagree with you to some degree yeah. and make the distinction between them and those who are they're completely 100% to troll. They have an agenda. <laughs> they don't want to learn or listen or anything like right. that. So um, right. I'm 53, like I'm about to be 53. Life is short. So I don't really have too much time in my remaining years to dedicate to those who are there to intentionally spread misinformation. Like I said, for all I know, I know the, the, there are trolls that are paid by the meat and dairy industry. So I don't want to waste my time. That, that's what I think. We'll probably waste our finite resources on dealing with them and not get to the real work. So I cast the trolls aside. I have a very clear policy on our channel that I, I ban trolls. I block them so I don't have to deal with them anymore. I'm here to talk to people who are truly interested. So like I, I've said in my live streams many times, you don't have to be vegan. You can disagree with what I'm saying here as long as you're here um, respectfully. You know, you don't yeah. come here to launch evil, hateful, personal attacks. You know, which the trolls often do. If you're here to listen, and a lot of people are just curious. So I try to present an example. Is what I'm getting to of a. Of a, of a reasonable vegan. I mean, some are more hardcore and crazy and God bless them and all that. I'm here to present just a reasonable, sensible vegan, common sense and, and I'm based in, in evidence and to present an example of someone like that. A lot of people like that approach. That doesn't work for everyone. Some people want to see a more hardcore activist type, you know, in front of slaughterhouses protesting all the time. That's cool. But some people just want to have someone like me to talk to and answer their questions and and likewise, even when I'm not like, you know, doing live streams or making videos, I try to just be a shining example anyway. When I go out in the public, I'll have my shirts on and I don't want to be a dick. You know, I'll think, oh, vegans are all dicks or something like that. So I'll have, oh, Ryan, he's a really nice guy. Or that vegan dude seemed really cool. You know, so that's all just be a shining example. And again, with my friends and family who know what I do. Um, they see me over the long term, and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an example. At first, they didn't know what I was doing. They probably thought we were crazy, but every year they see, wow, they're staying fit, they're staying healthy. Wow, Ryan slam dunks now at age 52. Wow, like that's crazy. You know, it's like, you know, I could never slam. So it's just stuff like this. It's just being an example, you know, a good positive role model. And I think yeah. that wears people out over time. They're much more yeah. open now than they were ever yeah. before to like, oh yeah, I just had a Beyond Burger. Like, wow, you did awesome. You know. <laughs> Well, and I think I think we are finally starting to see a little bit of a tipping point where it's more socially acceptable to be vegan. It's more common. The the all the eateries have yes. options for us now. So it's not so much that's a weird thing or you're out on the fringe. People are now okay tip dipping their toe in the water. And, it's and, mainstream. Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> And so that's that's an exciting change that, you know, people who have been, you know, uh, vegan for a little bit longer, but even for those who are trying out plant based for health, I, I applaud all of it. You know, I hear people say, oh, uh, you know, that that burger, it's not healthy for you. And I'm like, OK, 
there's health and then there's veganism. There's plant-based and then there's veganism. Veganism is about the compassion, about saving lives and, and, and the least impact on our environment and, and that part. That's what veganism is. Don't conflate or confuse it with being healthy. I mean, not one and the same. Yeah, they no. can be, but necessarily not. Right. Yeah, I, I am. I personally focus on total health too. And and part of the reason why that only just confirmed and strengthened is that I saw eating a healthy, mostly whole plant based. Uh, uh, whole food plant-based yeah. diet is the way to go for sure. You just feel uh, better. Yeah. yeah. You, can yourself. You, can, you can experience the results for yourself. Yeah. Especially if you're athletic, you really can tell how these fine tuned tweaks affect your, your body and your recovery. And I feel, yeah, like you much better. I mean, maybe in your twenties, you might not notice it as much. I don't know. I don't remember. I wasn't plant-based in my twenties. Well, I tried for a little bit there, like I said, but now that I'm 50 recovery is huge and having the yeah. energy to do my workouts is huge. And I remember what it was like, when I was 40, before I went vegan, and it was a lot more difficult. Remember, it took longer to recover. It took longer to to heal just dumb little injuries. So, um, yep. yeah, I, I noticed the difference. You know, this is not scientific, it's anecdotal, but try <laughs> things out, especially. That's what athletes do. Athletes, even right. at the highest levels, not to say I'm that, they're always fine-tuning and tweaking things to find that little thing that gives them the edge. So I'm saying it's not weird to experiment with your diet and see how that plays out no. in yeah. your athletics. But, and, and speaking of which, I did an interesting experiment. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to say anything at first because, uh, you know, obviously I run a, a fitness nutrition company. But um, uh, with COVID and with the, the gym shutting down, uh, we have a small home, so I don't have space for equipment. So I just stopped working out for uh -huh. For two months. Wow. Wow. What was that like? I'm sure that's probably the first time in your entire life, basically, right? At least 10 years that I haven't been working out straight. So <laughs> what was the results of that experiment? I'm, I'm totally yes, curious. Yes, it was interesting. As as expected, I lost about 15 pounds, 14 pounds to be exact. Wow. Yes. And uh, gained some body fat. Uh, uh -huh. uh, but here's the amazing thing. So I was down to um, 170, right? And my normal training weight's around 185. Mm -hmm. And within four weeks, I gained that 15 pounds back after going to the gym. Oh, wow. Four weeks. Wow. The mu pounds. Muscle came back that quickly? That fast. That's crazy. But I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either. That's why I was really surprised with it. But two things and caveats. Look, don't expect these results from home, all right? Mm -hmm. I've been training for 30 years. Yeah. So my body is already set to know mm -hmm. exactly. It's hardwired to know where my, my levels are at. Uh, and two, I have been vegan for 35 years. So I've been healthy and clean and eating mostly whole foods most of my life. And tr next, those supplements <laughs> make a big difference in, in, in uh, that speed of recovery of what you're talking about. So yeah. You take those three things together. I was amazed at how fast I was. Big, I was thinking, okay, eight weeks at least to get anywhere in the 80s. I was back to 184 within wow. four weeks. That's that was, talking about muscle memory or something. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but that's that's one of the beautiful things when you put good food into your body and good nutrition. When you give the body all the nutrition it needs, it can do remarkable things. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And it's probably it's cool too, probably for you to um have a forced um downtime like that too. I, I my body was I would have never done it otherwise. <laughs> I have to admit, when in the whole lockdown started in March here, uh I was bummed. I was kind of actually looking forward to it. Like, you know, I've been playing um a lot of um, you know doing a lot of sports that are have a lot of high wear and tear on the body. I was running for years and I got into basketball and slam dunk training. It's all the jumping and just all the crazy, like for me, heavy lifting, which is tough on the body. Cause I don't come from mm -hmm. a lifting background. My body need, really needed a rest. And it was really cool just not to really lift heavy mm -hmm. weights or jump for a couple months. I had lingering injuries. An both ankles were injured. I had something, some ligament on the side of my knee that's been sore and, just giving the, these injuries time to, to to heal, which I wouldn't have done if the gyms were open. So it's actually kind of cool to, uh, to have these programmed long-term breaks in training. You know, it's hard to program them, you know, when we're all motivated to keep going. But 
you know, there's some, I agree. I've, I've experimented a little bit too and found some benefit. It was able to like get back more into doing some stretching, getting my muscles flexible again, which they're getting all tight from lifting. I couldn't even like um, do forward folds, one leg forward folds anymore. Now I'm doing that again. So it's cool to get that flexibility back, which is really important in my sport. Notice most really good jumpers are really flexible and strong. I kind of lost the flexibility as I was gaining strength. Yeah, I, I ended up with this uh, this little bit of a tumor. <laughs> yeah, it there. It's kind of a little swollen. So. Why don't we get that looked at there, Jeff? <laughs> it could be something serious there. <laughs> uh, it's funny. That reminds me when I uh, first met you out at uh, in Natural Products Expo West when we won the uh, next well, Tokyo Veg Fest. It's the first time I met you guys. Remember? You oh, that's came, true. That's came true. up with that sample of clean machine green protein. I go, okay, it sounds cool. I'll check that out. Yeah, because <laughs> that's when I was starting to do my training into to, um, getting stronger for dunking. I go, okay, this. I'm looking for something to help me. I'm not sure what it will be yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then we won the next award at, at uh, the you were there and oh, it was it was amazing and then you actually uh, did a live spot right on the on the spot there talked about uh, did we? you and Angie were. We did a little live stream with you guys right then. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, we did, no, I don't remember if we went live, but we definitely filmed um, some some video that we put into yeah. our our coverage of that day. Yeah, we got a little yeah. interview with you in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. Yeah. You guys are cool. That was great. That was great. I, I missed the the Expo West. Obviously, it's uh, yeah. shut down. And uh, Plant Based World Expo. Have, did you go to Plant Based World Expo last year? Yeah. No, just the big one is just that the Natural Products Expo West here because it's yeah. so easy and close for yeah, us here. Yeah. Backyard. <laughs> yeah, basically, it's like for us going to Disneyland. It's really close. Yeah. So uh, on your video, Happy Healthy Vegan, I, I want to ask you, what is your what was one of your favorite videos of all time that you did? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's different kinds of favor, you know, like the travel yeah. videos are fun when we go somewhere like, you know, yeah. I go, go eating vegan in San Francisco and all the fun things we did there on my 50th birthday. We just rewatched that vlog a few days ago since we can't really travel much right now or shouldn't be. So we're kind of watching some of our old travel. Go, yeah, that was a fun way to spend my 50th birthday. Wow, and when nice. Angie turned 50, uh, the year after, um, yeah, we took her to Maui. She'd never been to Hawaii before and wow. ate some of the best vegan food of our lives. And again, these restaurants were not vegan, but they had extremely awesome vegan options. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the funnest because we go somewhere cool and enjoy what we our lifestyle, just exploring and going through nature and, and eating good vegan food. But for me personally, the ones where I'm by myself here in this office, going through these anti-vegan nonsense and just <laughs> doing a good debunking, just feels really good. It feels like I just kicked someone's butt, you know, intellectually. <laughs> well, I, I think that there's been a lot of that. I mean, the, the whole Joe Rogan stuff and oh, John yeah. Venus stuff and uh, oh my God. Never but ending. Uh, it's hey, a I mean, there's sorts of response videos for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah John so, Vegan, uh, yeah, John Venus had some of the worst excuses. Just to quickly summarize his argument here, he said he's seen some science that says veganism is good and some science that eating meat is good. So he threw his hands up in the air, confused, and said, I don't know what to do, and concluded, I'm gonna not be vegan. I mean, that follows logically in no way, shape, or form. <laughs> and then and the other his lamest one was um, I have a kid now. And I've been doing some research. He didn't say what that was. And he wasn't sure if it was nutritionally optimal for his child to be vegan. Wow. Therefore, he concluded that he himself, a grown man, should not be vegan. Again, that doesn't follow logic. Just, I mean, here's the thing. If people say he's leaving the cult, you guys are all getting pissed. Like, no, if someone wants to quit vegan, just quit. You know, sure, right. I might be a little bummed, a little disappointed, but I'm not going to make a video calling him an idiot or anything like right. that. But what pisses me and others off is how they're throwing veganism under the bus, just making right. these crappy excuses up how veganism is somehow not healthy. You know, right. just if you're going to leave, just leave. Cool. You know, fine. But don't 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 lie on your way out to try to like yeah, to famous just, or, I mean, or get yourself famous. I think that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get the, the carnivore people and the Joe Rogan crowd right. interested in them at our cost. And that's just completely right. I don't know what the word is. They're just not a good move. <laughs> 
Well, part of it, I'm sure, is just rationalization. You got to rationalize your your new position. But two, I think, especially with the influencer situation, which is okay, I'm quitting one team now. I got to go cheer on the other team, so I grab their their audience. You know. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, it seems all kind of financially motivated in some way, trying to get new views, at, at throwing veganism under the bus. I said, if you want to leave, John Venus, just leave. That's cool. You know, no hard right. feelings, but don't right. lie about it on the web and say it's unhealthy and make when there's so much overwhelming evidence to the contrary. And, yeah. and, and a lot of us, like me and Vegan Gains and Mike the Vegan, are all asking them, like, well, show some of this research. Present this evidence. <laughs> if it's so overwhelmingly convincing for you, share it with us. And we, we never saw one shred of evidence, one study or anything. It's just some vague excuses that he thought he might have had a few more pimples for one little period of time when he was vegan. That was like the worst thing he could say that happened to him physically. But yes, yeah, the science. So let's see some some studies. These studies that convinced you to not be vegan never saw a thing. So I know you mentioned vegan gains and and obviously Mike the vegan who I I really like a lot of his stuff too as well. Who, who are some of your favorites in the vegan movement? Um, uh, um, Earthling Eds does some I think does some incredible work. I yeah, love we need this stuff. we need all kinds. Like a lot of um, I've tried to get the the um, point across to some that. Vegan activism takes all forms. There's the classic form of like say Earthling Ed, Joey Carbstrong, people like that. That's one particular kind of vegan activism. And I applaud them. I think they're, they're great people and I'd, I'd, I'd like to spend more time with them. Um, there's other kinds of vegan activism too. Like say um, um, Dr. Um, Garth Davis, you know, he's mm -hmm. a, a vegan medical doctor and he his strength is not to go and like, you know, discuss ethics and morality on the street with people. He's a medical doctor. He needs right. to be in his wheelhouse, which is yeah, different from sure. Armstrong or, or everything Ed's wheelhouses. He's a medical doctor. He writes books. You know, yeah. he, um, he, he makes uh, medically informed, scientifically informed um, social media posts. He goes on TV shows. He's doing what he needs to be doing. I yeah. have my favorite wheelhouse, which is more like Vegan Gains or Mike the Vegan. And we're all and and I tell people you don't have to do that just by um, having an Instagram account or whatever and putting your meals up there for everyone to see. Yeah. Is a form of vegan activism, showing people how normal, easy, yeah. delicious vegan diets are. So um, we all yeah, yeah. we all just our way to to be the, the best vegan activist we can and there's no one way to be a vegan activist and there's no one right way to be a vegan activist i i agree i mean i like supporting vegan business because i think that's a real important piece of the picture look vegans can't make changes if they don't have consumer options so they need vegan versions of everything vegan shoes vegan clothes vegan you know whatever you do Vegan you know, protein, <laughs> vegan protein. <laughs> stuff. Right. That's why I like to promote you guys so much. I say they are a, not only making a vegan product here; they are a vegan-owned business. Like you, the CEO and founder, have been vegan longer than pretty much everyone watching our channel. So I'm very <laughs> just proud and pleased to support you guys in any way uh, I can. I believe in in your product. I've been using it ever since you gave it to me. It was instrumental to to, to get me to where I was to finally be able to slam dunk after almost a year and a half of training. I was like the final step I needed to make some more strength and, and muscle gains and, and then to, to pr promote you guys as a proud vegan owned business. I mean, yeah, this was all about. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. And look here, we got Oh, yeah. 12 on the label now. Yes. Awesome. Oh, cool. I was bummed yes. that you guys were out for a while. So cool. Now you got now it's official. You can officially legally print B12 on it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now what did you need to do to, 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 to be able to legally say B12? Is there some something you had to do? <laughs> we just needed to sell through our product to have the old labels on it. Oh, that's okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, that's so, what I love to tell people now too. It's like this has bioavailable B12, three forms of it, no less. And like I try to tell people, like, yeah, this is a whole food plant. A lot of people say, Why are you taking weird supplements? I go, I'm not taking a weird supplement. I'm taking a whole food plant that's been yeah. ground down. It's not much different than me getting my bananas and putting them in a smoothie, just changing right. their, their form a little bit. <laughs> right. It's a whole food plant that happens to have a bunch of really good things in it that happens yeah. to have a lot of protein, happens to have uh, um uh, um, uh, what's it? DHA or ALA? I forgot I was ALA. which one. ALA, ALA in there, yes. The ALA, yeah. that's right. And yeah, it happens to have um, um, bioavailable B12 amongst other nutrients, micro and macro. So it just happens to be a really great plant. So yeah, people that get all hung up on this whole food plant thing, no processed food, I go, well, 
you know, if you can make a smoothie, you're processing a banana. So if you can grind down some duckweed, it's the same analogy. It's not been changed. Right. There's no isolates or anything like that. It's about as right. whole food plant as you can get. <laughs> yeah. And, and look, it's, it's about the nutrition and, and properly feeding your body really good nutrition. Look, nutrient density is the way to go. And, I, you know, I, there, I was a, who was it? One of the doctors uh, coined the term, um, uh, uh, a nutritarian because um, he focuses on food that are really high in nutrient density. And mm -hmm. I do too. And I look, if you're going to eat X amount of food and this one has twice as much of the nutrients in it, why not just choose that one over the other one? That's all. It's just, uh, it's just trying to pick them. And I think there are some amazing plants like duckweed or like ahi flower, which is the highest in omega-3 of any plant in the world. Wow. And and, you know, you take that and you bring it to the marketplace so that people can consume it because, look, how many people do you know out there that is munching on eye flower? <laughs> no, you can't. You know, it's it's actually called stone seed. The the little seed that's a, it's so hard it'd break your teeth if you tried to bite down on it. Oh, so, okay. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah. So it's just making these amazing plants accessible to more people so they can get higher nutrient levels. Because when your body has really rich nutrient sources it does different things it really does and what's so awesome about duckweed too not to make this a commercial for <laughs> for duckweed but how it's so environmentally friendly it grows yeah. when you say like if it reaches maturity in like a couple days in in water and most of the water is like recycled or reclaimed water it's just like like so like such a great environmental footprint well and Right now, if you're watching right now during this time, during the month of July, um, it will be uh, um, on BOGO 50 and you can use Ryan's link. Just go to Happy Healthy Vegan and uh, click on his link and it'll take you to our page and you can get uh, buy one, get one 50% off all month of July. Yeah, our link's at uh, happyhealthyvegan.org. And you'll see up in the top navigation, faves. Just look for that. And yeah, I think Clean Machine's our first fave right there, first favorite right. product right there. So check it out. But yeah, I have this stuff virtually every day. The only day days I don't have it is when I don't have a smoothie, which is pretty rare. Days when I'll opt for oatmeal instead. I, I've been afraid to put it in oatmeal. I was, I was just assuming it's probably not that tasty in oatmeal. <laughs> Would I be correct in that assumption? I, I tried it in the oatmeal. You just got to add a bit more water. So oh, okay. um, it sucks up the water. But yeah, no, I've tried it. And, and two, it's about the quantity. Maybe about half a scoop for a serving of oatmeal is probably a little better. Okay, I'll try it. If I happen to do a heavy workout and I'm having oatmeal, I'll take your tips there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's see who is who are some of the funny guests that you've had on or funny experiences that you've had on uh, while you're while you're doing your videos. Well, that reminds me of an earlier question you asked too, like other like YouTubers. I kind of went off on a bunch of other answers. Uh, yeah, we um, and this is a guest I had. I want people to know about um, Paul from Hinch Herbivore. You probably know him. He's yeah, yeah, yeah a muscle, really well chiseled okay. fellow, <laughs> vegan, very passionate, <laughs> ethical vegan. Uh, yeah. But I haven't had actually haven't had too many guests on 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 my live stream um most of them have been kind of serious talks like when i've had mm. you on you know um yeah, no no real no no real jokers really except for maybe brian turner is a little funny another well chiseled vegan there i like to i guess i like to bring some of the strong men on just to reiterate <laughs> like hey you know there, you can be really big <laughs> and vegan I, and the funny thing is going back to haters a lot of haters will attack me like you know um for not looking like these guys well I don't train like these guys and they don't train like me, you know, why right. should, yeah. why should I, without doing the training, look like a, 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 an elite bodybuilder? Is that supposed to happen in people's sleep, Jeff? Does that just <laughs> happen without doing any of the work? It just happens because you have great genetics and maybe some people, but you know, I mean, I have the physique of the sport that I, I work in, whatever yes. sport I happen to be working at the time. So I, why am I, how did Ryan, a 52 year old Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan become the ambassador <laughs> of vegan bodybuilding, a, a, something I've never ever participated in before. So I like to well, bring these guys you, on. You, you do build your body just to do it to a specific in a specific way and you look great you look fit i mean most people you know most people like us over 50 on a standard american diet <laughs> don't look anything like us that's what i tell tell people and they're like trying to criticize me I go well i'm guessing i'm just assuming what their ages are I go go look at go look at your dad first and then let's compare to me i, I mean just put in perspective when i play <laughs> basketball back before covid i mean 
no one ever like like said i don't want that guy on my team he's just too weak in fact what generally happens jeff is kind of tough for me um being one of the bigger guys out there um typically the guy defending me they'll put their their most strongest athletic dude on me who happens to be like you know they'll be like half my age so it makes my job that much more difficult so if i was really that weak and emaciated i wonder why i'm, I'm having being defended by really strong big dudes you know <laughs> <laughs> No, so, and it's all about your goals, and and to me, it's about fitness. You know, that's why I changed our name to Plant uh, Clean Machine Plant Based Fitness Nutrition, because it's about the nutrition and it's about fitness. Um, you know, being fit and healthy—that's the goal that I want. And I know that there are a lot of people out there who want that. Now, we do have amazing athletes on our team. Corinne Sutton is is phenomenal what he's been able to achieve. Uh, as six year vegan and stuff like that, three time pro bodybuilder, natural bodybuilder, mm -hmm. drug free. So that, that's incredible. But I want to show you that that's the upper end of the example of what not everyone's going to hit that. Yeah. Not everybody <laughs> wants to get there, and not yeah. everybody should want to get there, but we should all look towards getting as fit and healthy as possible because it can make a big difference, especially when you look at COVID 19 right now. and all the deaths that are happening, well, at least good 90 plus percent of the deaths that are happening are people who are obese, who are nutrient deficient, who are um, have a, a pre-existing disease condition like diabetes and 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 hypertension are the yep. two top ones. Yeah, they're they're wiping out people. You know, it used to be oh hypertension you can treat it with blood pressure medication and you could last another 10, 20, 30 years, right? And now it's you have hypertension, your risk of dying from COVID are huge yeah uh, they could take you in a week so mm -hmm. uh, you know it's it's now's the time to start addressing these issues before they become advanced disease states that set you up to be able to be knocked off too quickly too soon yeah and, and yeah we've uh, i made a video too based on some of the research you put out there about there's um studies that have shown a, a correlation i'm not sure if they proved any kind of causation yet with the depleted or low uh, de deficient vitamin d levels yeah and and hospitalization so yeah i'm not taking any chances i'm making sure i'm getting vitamin d uh, yeah, right too. now preferably through sunlight you know um yeah. i like to get my vitamin d tested i don't i don't want to get my blood tested right now i prefer not to go to a lab right now but it's usually in in the strong range, but I'm making sure that I'm getting vitamin D. Um, I'm really trying to stay healthy. A lot of people say, why are you so scared? I'll, I don't know. I mean, these people that ask me that are usually in their twenties. And I looked at the, um, my age, my age group has a 10 times um, mortality risk and someone in their twenties. So it's a lot easier for them to say, you shouldn't be right. scared like 10 times. You know, and then my most scared though, for my mother, who's 82 and has many of those co comorbidity factors that you just right. listed there. Yeah. And yeah, that's the last thing I want to do is, is spread it to her. And I try to give her all the advice I can on how to stay safe through all of this. That's my big goal right now is to get my mom through until there's some kind of vaccine that she can take. So um, we had a question, what is what is your take on B12? Well, we kind of talked about that just a little bit, um, uh, but good question. I think, uh, you know, there is B12 in clean green protein, but it's about 20% of your uh, DV. So you should still probably take a B12 supplement just to make sure you're getting in there. B12 is, is a very serious thing. Getting B12 deficiency is no joke and can lead to permanent damage. It's not worth the risk in my mind um you know be on the safer side of that uh, equation for sure yeah that's what the reason why i started taking it too i was vegan for i think around five years before i ever started taking a b12 supplement i wasn't foolish though i was getting my blood level i mean my blood checked mm -hmm. and they were always around 450 500 they were safely well above the you know well within the reference range but around then i realized you know why not what harm would it be right. for me to 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 Take a B12 so I'll be setting a good example and I just won't have to worry about B12. It's relatively inexpensive. So I've been supplementing right. ever since. I did make a tweak this year. Once I um, read from you that there's bioavailable B12 in clean machine green protein, I, um, for right now at least, and I'm not saying I'm doing this forever, I stopped taking my sublingual spray because of this. My B12 levels are high as F. They're like 1,000, 1,100. <laughs> They're like in the top 1% of North Americans. They're really high. And I'm not doing anything crazy. I just take the B12 spray a few times a week. That's why I said, anyway, once I learned that there's B12 in Clean Machine, 
Um, I've stopped taking the sublingual spray with the the, the um, belief, not the belief, the plan to get my blood tested to see what happens mm, with that tiny tweak. Yeah, I shouldn't go drop down to like 200 in, in, in a few months. It doesn't work that way. It takes a while for right. depletion to happen, years, even decades yeah. sometimes. So yeah. that's my plan, just to kind of see where where that experiment leads me. Yeah, and, and hopefully this is just the tip of the iceberg that we will find that uh, um, we can properly – uh, put nutrients to make the soil live again in, in farming. You know, the factory farming, depleting the soil from all its microbes, uh, is which are producing the B12, which the plants could take up, is non-existent because we've just made dead soil now and just put artificial fertilizers in there to, to, to feed the plants. So I think when we look at biodynamically grown plants, we'll begin to see uh, and start measuring B12. And a lot, a lot of plants don't even look for B12 because they're mm -hmm. just under the assumption that it's not there. Just like now duckweed, we, who would have knew, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and, and had somebody not, uh, a, a larger company, not actually done a complete panel of all the vitamins, we may not even have known ourselves that B12 was in the product the whole time. So yeah, so that just could be the, like, you're right. we don't know, that could be the tip of the iceberg. Right. If, if duck, we had it, it stands the reason many other plants that have not been tested might have it, or who knows, maybe duck weed stands alone. We just don't know yet. So um, uh, another question from the group about being raw vegan. Have you ever considered, have you ever gone raw? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, we tried it uh, a long time ago pr before we started our YouTube channel. I Again, I, don't, I never kept a diary, so I'm just kind of estimating. It was maybe a duration of um, seven to ten months or something like that. Um, yeah, so I tried it out firsthand. I know exactly, you know, what it's what it's like. I went to Woodstock Fruit Festival right at the end of that in 2013. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm familiar with it. Um, I, I just tried it out to see what it was like. And um, and um, I just found that some of the, the the claims, again, this is what our show is about, checking people's claims, no matter if they're coming, these claims are coming from vegans or Joe Rogan or whoever, recent former right. vegans like John Venus, to see if they're really true. Like, you know, some of these claims like cooked food is poison mm -hmm. and, all, and this is how cooked food makes you slow and sluggish and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, once I started trying to put, um, not trying, I said, okay, I'm going to eat some, some really easy to digest food, like to steam some rice and beans. I felt great. In fact, Here's what happened to me and Angie on Raw without even trying. And I'm not saying this is a bad or good thing. I'm just relating my personal experience. We lost a ton of weight. And I think it just reflects how difficult it is to, to get enough absorbable calories. I mean, you have to eat all day. I'm a big dude. I'm six foot four and a half. You know, I'm a, a large man. Um, so, which means my calorie requirements are much greater than you know someone who's like, you know, a shorter fruitarian or something like that. They could probably right. pull it off easier. Angie was down to her high school weight, which is crazy because she was really, really thin in high school. I was really light. I look at my pictures now and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I, don't, I don't think I realized at the time how, how gaunt I had gotten. So anyway, yeah, once I started eating some rice, beans, potatoes, I actually felt better. I had more energy to do my sports. So I actually found, um, yeah, if you really want to lose a lot of weight, I guess raw is pretty good. But I found none of the advantages that their gurus claim to, to have happen really hold tr true in any kind of scientific way or even anecdotal way for me. But yeah, mm -hmm. if you want to try it out, yeah, it's cool. Um, well, I'll give you one, one fair warning though. And this is again, statistics, probability doesn't mean it will happen to you necessarily. Just like going vegan doesn't mean you are immune from getting a heart attack, but your chances of getting a drop way down. I've noticed most of the people that quit being vegan in the past several years um, I don't know if John Venus is included in this, but had long stints as raw vegans. Just saying that, saying it, 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 for some reason or another, I'm not sure what the mechanism is, what the causality is, but it, it, probability wise decreases the chances that you might not even be vegan, let alone raw vegan in say three years. Mm -hmm. uh, and that may be due to putting the importance on the diet part rather than on the lifestyle part, the compassion part. Mm -hmm. of, um, of veganism. And, and I, uh, in full disclosure, I went uh, completely raw, 100% raw for four years. Oh, wow. Um, okay. And, 
I experienced the same thing he did. I went from 170 pounds down to 140 pounds. Whoa. Yeah, that was me, basically. I dropped about 30 pounds, man. <laughs> Without trying. I never tried it. Yeah. I'm going on a diet now to lose weight. Never. Nothing of the sort. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I, I uh, liked aspects of it, but there were aspects like uh, the social issue. Now, you know, you say, oh, Jeff, but you, you were a vegan back in 1985. The social issue must have sucked. <laughs> and it, it was. I mean, I got harassed at work. I got, you know, nobody wanted to eat with me. I had to bring my own food, and, you know, brown bagging it at school. And it's like, yeah, it sucked all the way around. Um, but I did it anyway because I was I had a passionate conviction in my heart and was not going to change because it was my my moral compass. Yeah. You don't change your moral compass. You don't say, oh, today I feel like rape is okay. No, yeah. No, that's that's what I like to point out. Veganism, again, is a moral <laughs> position. Like you, right. rape is wrong. How can you one day say, you know, rape might be okay if I rape smaller people? Or I mean, how do you start? <laughs> how do you say like oh. if you believe killing creatures is wrong, uh, sentient beings, killing, torturing sentient beings is wrong? How all of a sudden do you wake up one day and feel, you know, it might be okay now? I, I don't understand that, how yeah. you can just flip your morality on and off like that. <laughs> Yeah. No, and I think that's that's because the, their base is probably more um, more focused around uh, personal health, and and I think there's a a big difference between those who are centered around service to others and those who are service around service to self. And um, those, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I don't want, I don't mm -hmm. like judgments. Yeah. Everybody is in this world doing their own thing. Absolutely, we yeah. all have our lessons to learn. Look, when I was young, I did a lot of foolish stuff. A lot of stuff I will never say on the <laughs> Oh, and no. It was, it was stupid. It was wrong. I was angry. I was troubled. I, I was mm -hmm. went through severe depression. I'm not that now. And I really am enjoying that. So in that process, I needed to forgive my old self, my younger self, for a lot of the stuff that I wish I'd never done. Yeah. But I did. And, and now I am doing that by committing the rest of my life to being trying to be a better person. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, we um, yeah, we did in our past is what it is. Yeah, um, a lot of people try to say like you know try to make these arguments like tying this into like veganism. Like you know, what's the scientific evidence of our ancestors being vegan? There's some that I, I the bottom line is I really don't care. I'm not trying to model my <laughs> life after a person who lived. Who knows? They don't ever even say when. Are we talking ten thousand years ago, a hundred thousand right. years ago, and where? Right. What part of the world? I don't care. I want to do what I can do now with the benefits that we have now. I can go to the right. supermarket. I can get clean machine green. I can do all these things now that people couldn't do in our past. So it's kind of irrelevant, like what happened in the past. It's all about now. We're heading into the future. What are we doing to make ourselves healthier? What are we doing to make this world not self-destruct through the what humanity is right. doing to it? And that's that's the bigger picture that I think we're both contributing to in a positive way through um, trying to get people healthy, trying to get people out of following the path that you eat what everybody else eats, you get sick, you go to the doctor, you take the drugs, you pay the insurance, you go to the hospital, you die. You don't have to get on that treadmill. You don't have to follow that line of reasoning and that path. There is a different path out there. And it's one that saves the environment, saves the animals, gets you out of that drug. Look, I looked up and the average person in a lifetime spends uh -huh. over a million dollars on healthcare, whether it's doctors, pharmaceutical drugs, uh, insurance and, and wow. hospitals. Wow. Over a million bucks. I mean, we don't make much more than that. You know? That would help our retirement out, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> right. So come on. Let's 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 stop wasting money. Let's stop destroying the environment that supports us. And and uh, let's turn our economy around. You know, the, the argument were like, well, what will happen to all the cows? And I said, Oh, what happened to all the horses? <laughs> what happened to all the horses when uh, we uh, invented the car uh, yeah know, exactly you don't it's see not horses like, running down the street you know taking yeah, over the world it's a ridiculous argument it's like they're, they're assuming some kind of i like to call the vegan rapture like one day everyone will be <laughs> vegan and there'll be like a billion cows <laughs> with nowhere to go it doesn't happen like that even though we'd all like to see that it, things happen <laughs> gradually it's like yeah all of a sudden yeah. there are a billion cars out there and the horses are out of business it happens right. things shift gradually production yeah. slows right. down as the demand yeah. for a product decreases so that's yeah. exactly how it happened it's funny how they have concern for all the cows 
in that particular thought example, but don't care about them and what's happening in reality. I mean, as, as much as my heart goes out to all those people that were producing eight track videotapes, um, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> the typewriter, it's, right? What happened to the typewriter people? I mean, we, why are we why do people selectively pick one industry and have so much concern for them? It's not like people that work in the meat industry couldn't switch over to if people started consuming more plants for themselves, there'd be more need for workers in those industries. Correct. As one industry right. dies, another one takes its place and creates more job opportunities. That's hundred percent it. Well, man, it's been amazing talking with you. I got to bring you back on again because we got so much to cover and so much to talk yeah, about. Yeah, like, as you said at the beginning, which, anything you want to talk about, Ryan said, I could talk about this stuff all day. If you want to talk about <laughs> veganism, if you want to talk about fitness, I, 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 there's no end. You know? <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, give a quick shout out to everybody, how they can um, get uh, follow you on uh, Happy Healthy Vegan, YouTube, social media, um, even on your website too. And I wanted just a, a little squeeze into, I know you're a music background, so uh, talk to us about a little bit about Love Spirals. Okay, yeah, I've been yeah, a music um, producer, basically, um, for since the 90s. I just put out our, our t my the 10th album I recorded and, and produced. I think I, there might actually be more than that. <laughs> I gotta look. Anyway, um, yeah, um, our, 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 my band right now with Angie's Love Spirals. You can find us everywhere on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify. It's all over the place. Um, um, we just released a new, uh, our first new song in, in like over a year, our, our, a new music video. So check that out. It's on our Happy Healthy Vegan channel. It's on our, our Love Spirals official YouTube channel. Speaking of Happy Healthy Vegan, that's how most people know who we are um it's uh just look up on on youtube that's our channel name happy healthy vegan we also go by the same name on um on instagram and facebook as well and you can find me personally on twitter i have a, a lot of people don't know that i ran for city council here in long beach and that's when i really got my twitter stream going again so you can see me on my on my twitter feed talk about not only vegan issues but i get into more political related issues as well so warning i get a little political there but anyway it's it's ryan lum r-y-a-n-l-u-m you see my name there it's right there just yeah follow me there on twitter um i think those are all our big social medias right there <laughs> Uh, and our awesome. website, our website, happyhealthyvegan.org. Yes. So Not check org, us out yeah. there. That's a link to our, our store and get shirts, these cool new muscle tees that we got for summer. Our book um, is all sold yeah, out right now. Keep it car, baby. I think this is our third or fourth pressing, completely sold out right now. And I don't think we're going to press these up because Angie's working hard on our next book. But we have the ebook for this half off right now. We're going to keep it at half off at $6.50 for the entire duration of the pandemic. Nice. So that could mean another year. Who knows? You know, but we want people now that are probably home more, not going out to as many restaurants, be able to make some good, healthy meals. And I want to say about maybe one fourth of the recipes in here are raw. So it's not like we're against raw food. We just don't call ourselves raw vegan. A lot of smoothies right. and stuff yeah, like that, yeah. that for breakfast in here. Anyway, yeah, that's all at happyhealthyvegan.org for the ebook, awesome. ebook e only. <laughs> well, it's such a pleasure having you on, my friend. And uh, thanks for all the great work you're doing and um, and uh, in, in snuffing out uh, some of the myths and, and, and stuff like that. But uh, also all the really positive stuff you're doing and being a great example. Really appreciate your friendship. my friend. You too, Jeff. And I'm really looking forward to being able to see you again sometime. So let's hope that's going to happen sometime soon. Hopefully next year. <laughs> yeah, so like, well, we will be at the, the world uh, plant-based expo. If you do plan to go, we'll, we'll have a 10 by 20 booth there. So do come and check us out. When, when's, you... when and where's that? It is New York city at uh, the Javits center. And right in right in the city, right if you cross the bridge. Go when, the when will that be? Uh, that is in June of next year. So. Okay, yeah. Hopefully things will be cool by then. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Pray, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hope so. Indeed. Yeah. I mean, uh, selfishly, I can't wait to get back in the gym. And and my heart goes out to all those people who are suffering from it. And my sister is a um nurse practitioner so she's on the front lines and oh, my wow. heart goes out to all the people yeah. that are on the front lines but really folks i just want to tell you get healthy change make some changes in your diet no matter how small the changes any small changes mm -hmm. make a difference you know um get good information ryan's a great source of the information like you said mm -hmm. there's great sources dr gregor from nutritionfacts.org mm -hmm. uh dr milton mills has got some great information too as well 
Uh, plus, you know, people like uh, Mike the Vegan. There's lots of really good information out there um, and uh, recipes. Ryan's got a ton of recipes um, and, and food tips and uh, new brands that are coming out and videos. I know you do sampling and stuff like that, too. And let we do that. Know. We have fun, yeah. <laughs> the fun part of the job, right? <laughs> I guess it's a great, this is a great job. Just eat through these cool samples here. Yeah, we do. We eat whole food plants like you probably do barely. But yeah, we'll have a little fun sometimes yeah. on a special occasion that keep it real. <laughs> well, and that's too, you know, when I was like, okay, um, I was rough vegan for, for a period, too. Uh, I actually went fruitarian for a year, but... Um, when I was raw vegan, then it's like it was really a turning point in the vegan movement. Like vegan pieces were coming out, and all these vegan cheeses, and I'm like, ah, shit! <laughs> I waited time thirty years turn. for this moment, and now I can't eat them. You know, and I'm like, screw it! I'm gonna have a little fun. So. Yeah, it's all about yeah what you do day in and day out, you know. Right. So you have vegan ice cream once every month or two, unless you're really ill, you'll you'll probably be okay. Right. No, the body has amazing recovery <laughs> factors. It's it's not so much what you do in a moment; it's what you do overall. Every day. You Give mm -hmm. your body a chance to recover. If you have some fun, do eat some good live food with it. Like if I eat a, a big cooked meal or something, I always have like a live salad or something with it. Those digestive enzymes and stuff that's present in there, the antioxidants or nutrients, high de nutrient density. Like I start my breakfast every morning with a, a big smoothie like you do with a clean yeah. protein in it. Real that's nutrient so dense, loaded Love with it. lots of raw fruits in there. And it yeah. is, it's, Good way to live the life. Yeah, start off pretty much every day raw, you know. So, so, so I have nothing against raw diets. Just, you yeah. know, I still want to eat only raw for every meal every day. <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, maybe um, we'll get uh, we'll we'll play tag up. We'll we'll switch each other out or <laughs> yeah, I'll have you back on on our channel for another awesome. um, interview. Okay. All right, that'd be awesome, Jeff. All right, cool. We'll stay in touch about that. Thank you. Have All a right, great thank week. you. All right, bye everyone. Thanks for watching.